Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. Hey, in this video we're going to be breaking down some of the skills that separate your typical shotgun rushing frat boy from a genuinely talented shotgun master. I know this is going to elicit strong responses from video game elitists too, so try to keep your cool in the comments when dealing with the inevitable all shotgunners suck comments. They'll happen, okay? Here's the honest truth. I'm a sniper or double primary player first and foremost. And uh, I only break out the shotgun a, you know, a couple times a week. And as a sniper main and a double primary player, I can tell you without a doubt that shotgunning as a baseline to me feels easier. It's more approachable on the bottom end. But, but <laughs> once you get into skill-based lobbies and quick play lobbies that are stacked with upper tier players, I mean, shotgunning becomes more of an art form there. I mean, good players aren't going to consistently let you close gaps without baiting you, pre-placing grenades on you, backpedaling you, etc. It's in these environments where you'll learn pretty quickly that shotguns are not always equip and profit weapons. Having a shotgun does give you an edge in lower skilled lobbies without a doubt, but when you start facing other good shotgunners and average to above average players, it's not quite so simple. So if you're looking to take your shotgun skills to the next level, this is the video for you. We're gonna break down a few key strategies that will elevate your game and help you consistently outperform more brainless approaches to shotgunning. So let's dive right in with the first strategy and that is make varied approaches. I'll never forget back in Destiny 1 when I was having a friendly 1v1 with Dr. Lupo on Burning Shrine on stream, and I thought for some reason that, you know, I was being clever by sliding into sight lines. I was just sort of spacing out and focusing on my shots and not my movement. You know, I got a couple of kills on him initially and then lost the next three uh, gunfights with him. And after my third death, Lupo says to me, you know you're sliding into every gunfight, right? That's how I killed you three times in a row now. And I was like, holy crap, he's right. <laughs> I, I did it five engagements in a row. The first two times it worked, but the next three, he knew where to aim every single time. Uh, I became predictable. And then I started focusing on making my approaches more varied. Some high, some low, some making him peak first instead. And that always stuck with me. So, I mean, still to this day, when I'm playing, I still hear Dr. Lupo in my head sometimes. You know, you're sliding into every gunfight, right? <laughs> it's been a constant reminder for me for literally years now to make sure that I'm not being predictable. I now mix up my approaches. Sometimes I'll start low, break line of sight, and then re-engage high. I mean, those fractions of seconds where your opponent has to readjust their optics to center you, those fractions of seconds, they add up fast and often dictate who wins and who loses in a gunfight. I know I don't have a silky smooth voice like Dr. Lupo that makes a straight man question his orientation, but I hope you'll always remember these words from me. Mix up your movement, mix up your movement, mix up your movement. Next time you're mid fight and you're dipping in and out of cover, hear me in your head, you know, saying mix up your movement. Imagine Lupo saying those words instead if you'd prefer. I, I won't be offended. As long as it helps you to remember not to be predictable. The next strategy, strategy number two, is one that sounds simple but is arguably one of the most difficult to master because it's not a thing you do in the game really, it's more a mental thing. It's not a strategy about training your fingers or your hands, it's a strategy about training your mind. The second strategy is make decisions quickly and don't hesitate. Hesitation is arguably the worst enemy of a shotgunner. You got to think of it as a, a chemical reaction of sorts. Shotgunning reacts to confidence and decisiveness to yield explosive results. You have to understand that having a bad plan sometimes works out. Making a bad choice is still a choice you can learn from. If you're second guessing yourself and half of your engagements are fights that, that happen, they just happen to you, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're fights that happen to you instead of fights that you opt into. You can't learn from those fights. You're gonna lose confidence and energy in those fights. I'm not saying that you have to go pedal to the floor the whole time. Sometimes the choice that you make and commit to is the choice to break away. And we'll talk about that in a minute. 
But if you hesitate to disengage, then your window to pull back and regain control will close fast and you'll be done for. So that second strategy, make decisions quickly and don't hesitate. Third strategy is this, disengage and re-engage from a different angle often. Take for example, this nasty triple kill I get, right? Nice little Icarus dash into the third, making him blank on his shot. Pretty slick move. But it was only possible because, rewind a few seconds, when I was approaching them from a different angle and abandoned it. One of the Warlocks dropped a Nova Bomb while I was pushing, so I immediately changed my approach. I didn't hesitate, and I wrapped around through B to push them. So many plays in this video were teed up by me approaching from one angle not liking how much attention I had, and re-engaging from a different angle. Rapid flanks are so good for aggressive shotgunners. A lot of times people will learn your character model, right? And as soon as they see you, visually see you, they'll think, oh, that's the shotgun rusher. I need to focus on him. I can't let him get up on me. And they'll tunnel vision onto where you were, you know, that position you were in. So when you break line of sight and quickly push from a different angle, it often catches them way off guard. This also circles back to being unpredictable. When people are always guessing how and when and where you're going to push them from, they feel like they have no control. They're always reacting to you. It puts them on their back foot, and that's an uncomfortable place to be in. Capitalize on that. Disengage and re-engage from a different angle often. The fourth strategy I wanted to bring up is this. Don't be a one-trick pony. Let's be real. If you're running a shotgun, then naturally you'll have more shotgun kills than primary kills in most games. Unless it's a long-range map and you're really focusing on scout or pulse shots or even AR spraying. Then due to the nature of Destiny 2 and the size of the maps in Destiny 2, then most of your kills you secure will likely be with your shotgun but that being said make sure you're not a one-trick pony if you really want to maximize your shotgun potential then you're going to need to reinforce your shotgun game with a strong primary game in this gameplay i'm using the lumina it's a 150 exotic hand cannon and you'll see me often swap back and forth between the shotgun and the hand cannon sometimes i'm priming with my primary weapon and cleaning them up with the shotgun and it's good to do that because if you prime a target up while you're approaching, that means you don't have to get quite as close for a finishing blow with the shotgun. You can leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room as well. Other times, I'm taking the shotgun shot first and swapping really quickly to my hand cannon to tap them once or twice to clean up the kill without using my last shotgun shell. Other times, I'm using the primary to kill you know, maybe one or two players and, uh, and then pushing up on the last guy right with my shotgun so the hand cannon was there to thin the herd so to speak one thing i like to do sometimes is sort of faint a shotgun attack i'll have the shotgun out and i'll push forward you know they can see that light of the shotgun on the front of it they visually they they can cognitively say oh he they react to it they say oh he's got a shotgun out right he's pushing with a shotgun they see it and um and what happens is I'll have that shotgun out, I'll push forward, baiting the opponent into swapping to their close range weapon, and then I'll swap to my primary, stop dead in my tracks, and even start backpedaling and firing at the same time. It's hilarious. It works a lot. So just remember, good shotgunning needs to be supplemented with good primary skills too. Don't be a one-trick pony. That circles all the way back to predictability as well. The last strategy I want to hit in this video, although, I mean, honestly, this could easily be a series with how many things I'd like to bring up and focus on, but the last thing for today I want to hit is this. The fifth strategy is to look at your radar every two to four seconds. Even mid-fight, when you crouch behind a box to reload, eyes on the radar. Immediately after winning a fight, eyes on the radar. While approaching a door, eyes on the radar. I don't care what you're doing. If you want to make the most of your shotgun, you need to have a very accurate lay of the land. And the landscape is always changing. So you have to be checking the radar every two to four seconds like clockwork. Always be working with the most recent and accurate information as possible. 
Check that radar like you check your Twitter DMs after messaging the girl you're crushing on, right? Check that radar like you check your texts after you ask your wife for a sexy pic. I mean, check that radar like you check your email for your early access code to a game you've been highly anticipating for the better part of a year. You get the idea. That thing is your strongest tool in Destiny 2, so leverage it. All right. I hope these five strategies really strike a nerve with you and uh, you find your stride with shotguns in a new way and they really come alive for you. Always, always strive to get better at whatever interests you. I mean that. If it's sniping, try to learn the tools of the trade, right? If it's primary skills, go watch the most accurate and deadly primary skill players play the game. If it's how to titan, I don't know, go watch good titans play the game, etc., etc. Even outside of gaming, this is true, you will enjoy the things that you enjoy even more. And on a deeper level, the more you learn and appreciate the depth and complexity within that thing. Shotgunning is no different. So get out there, start implementing these strategies and building up the muscle memory that you need to do these things without even having to think about it. It may take a few good gaming sessions to, you know, of focusing on these strategies for you to actually start implementing them naturally. And uh, that's all right. You're training yourself, you know, you're training yourself some new tricks. And repetition is the key. So, as always, thanks for watching the video. If you found it entertaining or helpful, please feel free to let me know in the comment section or by liking the video. Uh, those like ratios go a long way in helping me understand what types of content you guys like to watch best on the channel. So thank you so much for supporting. Uh, please be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the crucible.